So I'm just gonna throw this open and just talk about, you know, Creep Show and how you got involved with it. And what do you want to know? I want to know when, when did you first hear about it. I'll start with you, Tom. When did oh, you first heard about them? I don't remember that. You don't. Probably a call from George. Yeah. You know? um, George likes to send telegrams. Before Dawn of the Dead, the telegram said, "Start thinking of ways to kill people." Yeah. You know? But Cre I don't. I just don't remember about Creep Show. Because we had, we had months of prep time before the crew even showed up to build the sets and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were building Fluffy and Nate's corpse for John Amplis. You know, we had, right, yeah, and John you, came you, in for a head cast to do that. So yeah, I was cast be... only because I got a call from you. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, you called me and said, I, I need somebody, yeah. To play Nate's corpse? Yeah. So yeah. I'm responsible for You are responsible oh, I never, for I don't that. remember yeah. that. Were you being cool? Yeah. For me being in it, yeah. Oh my God. Why? You must have been thin. Thin. Then those days, yes. yes. After, <laughs> in yes. the past, yes, because yes, yes. <laughs> we cast yeah. your head. Yes, you I, did. I, I a little bit younger. A, a little, <laughs> yeah, but wasn't necessary. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was because I was slender. Yeah, and um, that's the one thing that I uh, regret about your particular makeup was I asked the costume people to make your suit two or three sizes bigger, mm, so mm, you mm. would look, because you're a skeleton. Well, I, I think The suit was skin tight, it should have been sold. baggy. It's sold. Yeah. I really think it's sold. Okay. I, I don't think anybody's ever questioned no, it. Yeah. yeah. You, probably. But. Well, except <laughs> for the scene where the maggots, we had to put maggots on you. Well. Because he wouldn't do okay, it. Okay, I didn't. That's right, you did, you didn't and I know, no. I've told this Have you? <laughs> secret on one myself. Of the girls, one of yeah. the girls on the crew put the suit on. Girls are braver man. than men. It was uh, Debbie Gr Pintus. Debbie Pintus, yes. From California. Yeah. Women are, are much stronger, uh, braver than men ever could be. But I remember I have a video when the be. maggots were on her. Yeah. I have a video that she's screaming, it's going in my eye. <laughs> it was a magic, and you can see, see it in the film. See, there's a re there's a reason I didn't want to do you it. You didn't yeah. want any maggots yeah. to crawl in into my your eyes. eyes, or mouth, or nose, <laughs> or any <laughs> orifice. There were uh, mealworms. Okay. I met George in L.A. There you go. I knew him from my prior life, and he had sent me the script, and he said, "Is there any part in there you want to do?" And I said, yeah, I would like to play um, Jordy, the swamp guy gets eaten by the grass and stuff. And he said, well, Stephen King wrote it and he's going to play that. So that, uh, and then I realized he wasn't really asking me, is there any part that I want to do that he's going to give He said, would you mind playing the father in the wraparound, the beginning and the end of the film to tie them all together. I said, yeah, sure. And I asked him, are, are you going to really shoot it like a comic book? And he said, yeah. And it, I did, I loved the way that movie looked when it was all finished. It looked There's a like, mood. It There's looked a mood like a movie. comic yeah. book. Well, it was that, and that's and a great looked. segue for, uh, for me because yeah. I got a call from Nikki Mistandria, who was the key grip on Creep Show. Yeah. And uh, I had done a lot of uh, theatrical lighting uh, at the Pittsburgh Playhouse and different theaters. And uh, in Creepshow, it was before digital, all the light changes that happen, all the color changes that happen before um, anything dramatic happens in the film. There's one before Tom and whatever. I did that. I did most of the color yeah. changes, maybe about 95% of those. So and those were done with scrims behind it. Yeah, them, they were right? done with a screen, uh, a screen behind it, a scrim behind the, uh, uh, it was probably just the silk, and, uh, and then we would light the silk from behind with the patterns on a gobo. A gobo would be in the, in the light, and then it would give the pattern. Um, and then with Tom and I both there, George cast us as the garbage men. We were the, that's how we got cast as a trash. Uh. And if you, when you watch the movie, we're we're kind of in the distance coming closer to the camera but yeah. watch the choreography in the distance because we have a whole bit worked out we're kicking can lids and <laughs> throwing bags well, over our shoulders. i mean the whole choreography well we decided you know what would trash men do and you know what, what, what these trash guys they're <laughs> they're loud at yeah. six o'clock in the morning, they're making as much noise as they can. That's yeah. what we did. So we did. We we were slamming down garbage cans. We were smacking the garbage truck, and we created this whole of, sort of improv. And uh, right did. before we actually got to the lines. And yeah. when, okay, yeah. when you were doing the lights, 
when you were doing the screen behind Leslie Nielsen, yeah. when he was laughing hysterically, yeah. was he doing the fart machine? No. To make oh, no. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> he could laugh on cue, okay. but... But he would do that to make us to laugh. Oh, no, in, in, yeah. in, in Naked Gun, when he yeah. and Priscilla Presley were coming out of the movie theater, yeah. Yeah. and they had just seen Platoon, yeah. and they're laughing hysterically, yeah. I know he was doing that. Oh, <laughs> sure. That yeah. machine. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, you go, you went to, didn't you go to dinner with him? Yeah, yeah. Chris, uh, ah. Chris, George's wife, Chris Romero, to me. She, uh, me, the, George was busy, he's doing film, and she said, would you go to dinner with me in... Uh, Leslie Nielsen at somewhere on 22 out there and and I said yeah sure so I, I was her date and I went and he had a girlfriend or somebody with him I don't know what but part way into the dinner the appetizer didn't even arrive and you hear this <laughs> and I said, oh my God! I did. How terrible! Would I know it wasn't me. <laughs> and then you wait for the smell, but there is none. And, and then he, again, you know, they get. And finally, he he held it up and, and showed. It was, it was was that the case when the people of the next table? Oh no! Left? They were they well, were. It, it was everybody was because I heard out I heard about people it. walk up to him as yeah. they were leaving and said, "You are disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> well, we I, I think we were very fortunate uh, to have such a great cast of actors. I mean, Creepshow is just filled with wonderful actors, including the four of us. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> most, mostly us. Um, no, we were garbage men. We were. Teach you to throw away my comic books. Stephen King's actual son. Joe King. Joe. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, now now ah, he's, uh, you, now he's uh, Joe Hill, the author. Joe now does Joe Hill. I know. Popular I know. author, successful author. Yes. Yes. Stephen yes. King was so worried about that scene where I had to slap oh. his kid. No. And <laughs> he's in he's standing right there hovering around all the time we're talking about it, rehearsing it. But it was off You're camera. You're not gonna hurt him. You're not gonna hurt him, are you? You're not gonna hurt him. Oh. Gonna hurt him. <laughs> and I said, Steven. I'm an actor. We're doing this for years. I'm a I method know, actor. I am going to hit him. <laughs> you are? <laughs> I said, yeah, but it, it'll just be fingertips and they'll make the sound yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it'll look good, but it won't hurt him. No, don't, don't worry. <laughs> He does have a red mark on his face. We, <laughs> did, we, we, we put the yeah, red that mark was on that. his face. Because he, like, he, he loved us. Oh, yeah. He always yeah. was always hanging out with us, yeah. the effects yeah. lab, with all the monsters and things. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah as a matter of fact, one night we were, uh, the crew was, and when we were shooting the uh, Something to Tide You Over sequence in New Jersey, <laughs> the crew was hanging out in one of the rooms, and uh, one of the other grips a guy named Michael Lestorti, whose nickname was Dondi. We all had nicknames. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we used to do this bit. He looked like Charlie Manson. And we would do this bit where uh, I would play Tom Schneider, the interviewer, right. and then he would do Charlie Manson. And so Stephen comes in and he's having beers with us. And somebody says, hey, Moon Baby and Dondi, do, do Charlie Manson and Tom Schneider. So we start doing... Charlie Manson and Tom Schneider, and people are laughing, and Stephen King gets up and runs out of the room. So the next morning at breakfast, I said, hey, George, I, I think we freaked out Stephen King last night because <laughs> we were doing, and he, he said, Moon, how could you freak out Stephen King? And I wow. said, I told him what happened. He said, no. He said, when he gets inspired, when he gets a, an idea, an idea ah. he goes the right go away. He does down. not hesitate. Oh, he goes right away. He writes something down. Right. Yeah. So a yeah. few months later, uh, actually, it was about a year later. Um, he, uh, Stephen, was writing Christine, which is named after George's wife, Chris Romero. Uh -huh. So Christine is named after Christine Romero, uh, and he was writing that during Creep Show. And so uh, I got the book, and because I used to read all of Stephen King's stuff, and on like page 15, there's a hitchhiker that looks like Charlie Manson. And I said, we influence this page. This is my page. I want a royalty. I want seven cents every time this book sells. Yeah. You know, there was a time, there was a, George had a dinner party one time during or right after, it had to be during because it was a, it was a memorable evening for me. There was, George was there and Chris was there, Adrienne was there and 
John Carpenter her was husband. there because her he, husband. he and Adrian were married. And they, he was I think I was there visiting. at his apartment. And at his apartment yeah. over in what I was, was at, I was at a dinner with Adrian you, and John Carpenter. I wonder. Yeah, and Stephen yeah. was there, and I was there, and and wow. and I thought, oh my God, and you, I thought if if, if anything happened, <laughs> this be. would really. Like if there was an earthquake or the yeah. whole like, genre, like if a meteor hit that house, yeah, honestly, the God. horror genre a would be yeah. wiped out. Yeah. It would be, it'd be like the Titanic. Yeah. yeah. Well, that must have a been another gun. party because if Stephen wasn't there yeah. when I did it, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I thought, oh my God, what a mm. yeah. The whole hub of the movie is right there. Yeah. John, I wanted to ask you about when you filmed Father's Day being out on that property, the house out there, that big estate. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, was it Fox Chapel? Or? Fox Chapel, yeah. as yeah. I recall. The Abbott yeah. House, the Abbott yeah. House. The Abbott House. He was a wig, was? Oh, a yeah. wig importer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, it was just absolutely gorgeous. In fact, yeah, uh, when, you, when you were coming out of the grave, what was down there with you? Was the, I think there was a fog machine, lights, fan. A fan to blow the fog. Yeah, okay. and, yeah. And you were under tar paper. You just tore Correct. through the That's tar right. paper to come yeah. out. Yeah, to come up and out. And while yeah. we were shooting the Abbott House, days Mr. before CGI. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. This was all practical. This was all all practical. practical. But while we were shooting, the guy who owned the place, Mr. Yeah. Abbott, his German Shepherd died. And they buried him in that hole. In your grave. <laughs> they buried him <laughs> in your grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we were able to do that. <laughs> it's a practical uh, problem. Yeah, right. It's a hole. It's a hole. It's an eternal home. <laughs> but what were you going to ask? But I was, uh, you know, I, what I remember about yeah, that hole mostly was coming up through it, but then working with like the likes of Vivica Linfors, oh, sure. who is just a, was a delightful, wonderful mm. woman. Tremendous actor, uh, working with Carrie Nye mm -hmm. and ripping her head oh, off. Yeah. I loved her. Uh, who Ed Harris. That's right. Chain did smoke. Harris, yeah. She Turf. chain smoked and swore like a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> and loved every Ed, second yeah. of her. And uh, and Ed Harris, I got the kill, uh, which is not a bad. Wasn't a bad deal. So well, uh, that was sort of a almost a, a Night Riders cast. I mean, half the yeah, cast was, was really. Riders. That's true. Between Warner you Shook. and yeah, you, yeah, right. you. Ed Harris, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. when I heard Vivica Linford was coming, oh, I loved her. Because I knew her when she was a Swedish beauty queen in Don Juan with Errol Flynn. Mm. When she first, when she walked into the room, the make, because George brought her around, I took her face in my hands, and I looked at her and I said, "You're the queen from Don Juan, <laughs> Errol Flynn," and I kissed her on the cheeks, you know, and she, she it was like. An animal on the side of the road that took the thorn out of their paw. <laughs> <laughs> she was mine forever, and they were best friends. Because I just loved her. In that but way. she was game too. I mean, she was really game to roll around on yeah. the ground. And, yeah. And, yeah. You know. Well, the whole cast seemed to really get into the spirit of the thing. When you watch all the different performances, everybody, George yeah. Romero. Everybody George got Romero. it. That was George. Yeah. yeah. And he wanted to do it for George, George. Yeah. Romero. Anytime you worked for George, it was like that. I yeah. mean, Dawn of the Dead was like that. Knight Riders was like that. Yeah. I'm sure Martin was like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. George would have rolled on the well, floor. Well, even the later films yeah. I got to work with on George, it was just, even if the conditions were terrible and oppressive and miserable, no well, one was going to complain. Land of the Dead, it was oh, freezing God, yeah. up I mean, there. I mean, Survival of the Dead, we had snow, sleet, rain, and fr freezing it over all in the same night, and mud up to our heels, and no one complained because right. George Romero's over there. What are you going to do? Yeah. Um, it's, it's just so weird. I still can't get used to thinking of him in the past tense. I know. It's I been, don't think of him as the I know. Obviously, I don't, uh, obviously I don't think yeah. of him in the past tense. No. I yeah. saw him at a convention once. The crowd was to Cincinnati. The doors hadn't <laughs> opened. He was backstage. He was looked kind of down. I walked over and I said, hey, George, how you doing? He said, kill me. Kill me now. <laughs> he was sick as a dog. But mm -hmm. when the doors opened, boom. Never yeah. knew. Oh, I saw that a couple For of every times. single yeah. person yeah. that came in. Yeah. He, and you know, he... That, the creep show was really the first time he had worked with, because Night Riders that we did the year before, uh, Ed Harris wasn't a big star. Oh, he, was he, unknown, was yeah. unknown. he was unknown. He was pretty brand new. Yeah, he yeah. was. But Creep Show was the first time George worked with a with a cast full of stars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you work with yeah. E.G. Marshall and you work with Fritz you know, Weaver, Fritz Weaver, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. and Leslie yeah, Nielsen. Yeah. Yeah. You, you work with those guys, uh, and everybody was so com all those pros. It was great to watch them yeah. be as comfortable with George as well, and him as comfortable with them. I mean, you know, it it was. 
It was just George. He had that way of making actors feel at ease when you worked with and him. And I never figured out how he managed to be an authoritative presence on the set without lording it. He was not a dictator. He no, was not never. Oh my God, order. no. He, if, if anything, he was the opposite. Uh, yeah, as, as actors, I think we all can say that I don't, I don't think I ever worked with a director that gave me more freedom than George. You know, yeah. pretty much just do the scene yeah. and, and if he didn't direct you, you knew you were doing it right. And he let you improvise. Yeah. He let you improvise. Yeah. Yeah. As an yeah. actor and as a special effects guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I imagine on Martin yeah. that would have had to have been the case with what you were doing. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, he was, the word that always comes up first for me when I think about George is how he creates a family and has created a family. You know, he still, um, if he were here, he would still be in contact with all the same old oh, folks yeah. Oh, yeah. that that yeah. he started back with in with Leighton Image. Yeah. You know, he would. Yeah. He he's he's just there's a charisma there that is uh, really full of kindness and, uh, uh, yeah. uh, and big gentle teddy bear. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Bear. And uh, funny. Bear of a guy. So funny. And funny. Oh, God, I mean, funny. I, he would call funny. me and just. You know, we would do dueling Brandos, or I would call <laughs> yeah. him. Oh, it's Brando, he loved him. He and I would be honest, I ain't doing this Brando. And, you know, we would do this whole Brando thing. And, and then we'd hang up. I mean, we would yeah, just, like, we would do Brando for five minutes, and that would be it. You know, but that's I mean, that the thing George. about what, what, every one of those sets, every one of these sets that I've ever been on, certainly, are the same people that I worked with in, when I first worked with George. You know, they're all the same people. Um, and they're not they're not employees, yeah. they're family. Yeah. You know? yeah. It seemed to me and, and that a lot like, of the sex pieces actually ended up in his oh, yeah. living apartment. <laughs> yeah. And then Hal later Holbrook's, in his house. Hal Holbrook's house is in my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. And all the bookcases yeah. are up there. Every, everything is but in the your problem, house. But the problem with that is <laughs> that all that furniture was stored up on a balcony in the high school gym. Do you remember? Oh and yeah, all yeah. All the cockroaches that escaped <laughs> went into that That's furniture. That's where they went. Because we gave most of it to the Salvation Army, and they got horrible phone calls from people. Oh, is that oh, right? These oh my God! Tr big tree. Yeah, not the little, little, not these little guys. Oh, I had always heard that none of them escaped. Oh, thousands. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Thousands. As a matter of fact, it, the the current owners of that used to be Penn Hall Academy, where we shot Creep Show, oh, was a high yeah. school that they kind of your parents threatened yeah. you if you were misbehaving. Yeah. I'm going to send you to Penn Hall Academy. Yeah. You know. And when it closed, we turned their gymnasium was our sound stage. That's and where the sets were built. That's oh, where we built man. all the sets that's where was we in shot. the gym. And then the classrooms were edit suites or production offices or up whatever. Up on the hill. Up yeah. on the hill. Up yeah. on the hill. Yeah. And the new company, the company that owns it, I won't mention names, uh, still has a cockroach problem because <laughs> yeah. of creep show. And but that these, was... this is a new breed of cockroach because they came from Trinidad. Oh yeah, yeah. These they huge were mothers. They yeah. Yeah. They were, we used to call them palmetto bugs when when they were in Florida uh, when yeah. I was a no, kid. No, these were huge. But they were giants. They were George, really I always remember the name. I think it was Gigantus Blabrontera or something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. Really, I mean, just as big so as George. So George is famous for infesting Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Palmetto bugs. Yes. Yeah. Formerly native well, to Florida. And, and I think <laughs> a, another a sort of credit to George as far as the family thing goes. We've all acted for a long time in this room. Yeah. And we're not close with any other cast members that we've worked with right. but the Romero film casts Tom yeah. George you know John yeah. and Tom and just, Tom and I we're all you yeah. know we see each other it's like a family reunion right. we get yeah. together on holidays like Fourth of July we get together we, we have together England conventions together. yeah we I go to Tom's house he comes you know we, we go out to lunch together I mean that speaks a lot to George because he wanted it to be that way, and that's exactly the way it turned out. You know, making a movie with George was like a bunch of kids in a treehouse playing, and he was just yeah. one of the kids. He was like the big kid in the playhouse, yeah. and in the treehouse, and that's really what it was like. Yeah. He was that that fun. It was really My that birthday fun. was during Creep Show, and they brought me out of the little studio. We were in the whole cast and crew, and there's the cake, and they sang Happy Birthday. And it ended sort of weird, you know, and we all kind of went away, went back in there. 
they knocked on the door like a half an hour later to do it again. <laughs> Sing happy birthday, the cake, because the explosive didn't go off. Oh. <laughs> and it didn't go off the second time. <laughs> so they told me, fuck, the cake, the cake is sent to explode. And George is there waiting you know, for it to blow up. <laughs> he was probably, it was probably his idea. Uh, no, it was probably him and Daryl from Yeah. 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 Well, it, makes for, it makes for a great story, though, the way uh, that yeah. didn't work, that's awesome. Uh, it's bittersweet that, you know, he's no longer here, but he got to see just how many people loved his movies. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever he would see that, I mean, I remember sitting with him at a convention in Chiller. We're outside in the tent. It's October. There's, it's freezing outside. People are standing out in the cold, mm. dying of frostbite out there. Yeah. And George signed, I think, as I remember, it was seven to eight hours straight without taking a break. Right. Wow. And the whole time I'm like, George, you want to stop? He's like, nah. No, he didn't he just, go eat. He didn't no, go to lunch. never did anything. And the whole time I'm just like, I don't know how you're doing this. But he made every single person that came up at that table feel like, I, you have, you're my attention yeah. Yeah. right now. Right, right, right. That's a really hard thing he to do. Not a lot of people that. can do that. And he, he was, was just, so everyone walked away from that table like, I got to meet and talk to George Romero. Yeah. And it didn't feel phony or yeah. fake or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, unlike Tom Savini, it's not the easiest thing. Oh, in the world. yeah, well, of course. What? Yeah. what? <laughs> did, I, did I miss something? What? He, he looking called right you, at the camera? He, he called you a jag off. Uh, no, I was a jag off. Yeah, yeah, he, he was. was. He was when he first met me. But yeah. he didn't I've use changed the word. my ways, though. Okay. Oh, he he was. He's not from Pittsburgh. He's not from Pittsburgh. No, I'm not from Pittsburgh. That's Jack why he off. would not use. It's that's why. Yeah. That's why that's every that's time Michael Keaton thing. is in the movie, so is the word Jack. Yeah, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I know. Mike, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So, which story in Creepshow is your favorite story? You know, I go back and forth because every time I watch the movie, I mean, I, that was the first horror movie I ever saw was Creepshow. Uh, the one I always respond to the most, just because I, I just think it's so well told from the beginning to the end, and there's a lot of twists and turns. Is the crate? Mm -hmm. I think the crate. Just the performances in it, and the and the, the, the and Fluffy scared the shit out of me when yeah. I first, because you and and what was genius about it is you never really get that long a look at it. You know what? Uh, George apologized to me when the movie they were editing. He says Tom and, and Paul Hirsch edited yeah. the crate. Paul Star Hirsch, Wars. Star yeah, Wars yeah. edited Star Wars. He said Paul Hirsch edited this, and you know Fluffy is hardly in it. It's great. Yeah, that's what's going to make him scary. And it does because if you, when if you go see flies the open, movie, oh, yeah. you just see a quick shot. That's it. And, that's, and and that the was sound a, design on that oh, was great. Yeah. That was the secret of Alien. You never saw that creature, no. but it scared the. Sh if you see the monster, you go, okay, that's it, I can deal with it. Yeah. And you're not afraid anymore. You see just enough of Fluffy yeah. to understand what it is. That he's powerful, it can and take you a, out. And it has a shitload of teeth. Sharp and teeth, gonna, sharp it's teeth. It's oh, gonna really hurt. Many, <laughs> many, many, many. But Fritz Weaver, uh, oh, when he was, when he was freaking out, freaking the whole out. Time. Oh my God. How do you do that? Oh, how do you do that? Right. <laughs> and he's doing the laugh. And Adrian Barbeau is just eating that roll oh. alive in that. And movie. that's great because she's not the that kind of person. Opposite yeah. of really. I mean, she yeah. could not be less like that yeah. character. Yeah. I mean, he just George just had a way of just getting, just getting people to have fun. To mm -hmm. understand the tone of the material that he was going mm -hmm. for, and every like in Creepshow is never a better example. You have all these Hollywood actors, you have independent people from Pittsburgh, and they all got the wavelength. They understood exactly what they yeah. were supposed to be doing, and that's not easy. That's not easy at all for something that's as pitched as Creepshow is. And everybody got it. Every every single one, except the garbage men. They weren't good. Show your food before you swallow. Yeah. They were not. They were off. They were absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. They were the we best. Good. They we were the best great. thing. In the, That's right. What a great <laughs> way to end that movie. We were <laughs> <fabulous>. <laughs> performances. As a matter of fact, there yeah. are no small parts. Only small, small actors. Small actors. Oh, Garbage wow. men, small parts, but great actors. Yeah. Great, oh, wonderful goodness. actors. Yeah. I want to see more comedians. Well, I always thought there should have been a spin-off of the Garbage, yes, of the garbage, garbage Men. Yeah. Yeah. Because we did find idea. the comic book. It could be in our hands, flipping pages to the next episode. You're Garbage Man number one, though. I am number one. What? Yes, I am number one. You're number oh, two. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> I, in the I, am number I was one. waiting to bring this yeah. one up. Are you sure about you're, that? You're, you're number two. Your ego is bruised. <laughs> you're number two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am number one. You are number but, uh, one. But in all honesty, in all fairness, Tom, I think it's because I'm on screen first. I think that's what it is. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we so walked down the street you together. You started yeah, I'm a little further than you. And then but you that was a two shot. She was down. All right, so I was more important. I was more important. two shot. I was just trying to make you feel better.
<laughs> you know, just I mean, just to I don't know if we can wrap this up necessarily, but just to kind of a, a, a thing from each of you, just kind of looking back on the Creep Show experience and George and you know what you've gotten to accomplish here through his work in Pittsburgh, and just anything you want to say to kind of close this out. Well, for me, I just feel fortunate and lucky. I mean, I've made a lot of friends over the years because of my friendship with George Romero. And I just feel fortunate for all of that, you know. My career wouldn't exist no, if it right. wasn't for George Romero. Yeah. There would not have been a Friday the 13th if there wasn't a Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead got me Friday the 13th, and that one-two punch is what got me every movie after that. As an effects guy, okay? Yeah. Um, we were in England, and... Uh, it was my birthday again, and uh, they gave me a present, and I gave a little speech, and I mainly talked about George, and I looked over, and you were crying, yeah, yeah, yeah. just because I, I couldn't keep it, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, uh, those two summers were the favorite summers of my life, at Knight Riders in 1980 and then Creepshow in 1981, and uh, they, to me still, those were two of the greatest experiences I had as an, as an actor, and, as, as, yeah, Knight Riders. And, but as a filmmaker, I learned everything from George. And by being fortunate enough uh, to have been cast in Dawn of the Dead by John. Uh, John was doing the casting for Dawn of the Dead. And by getting me into the family through Dawn of the Dead, uh, I owe a lot to John for that. Um, I was able to really grow as a filmmaker, uh, you know, and I still work in the business and I teach. And all of that was because of George. Um, I, and I was sitting with George actually at Todd AO uh, when they were uh, mixing the sound for Creep Show, when I got a call from my agent at the uh, at the sound stage there, at Todd A.O., that I had gotten my first TV series. So I was with I was with George when that happened, and he took me out to dinner that night to a place called Dharma Grebs, and we celebrated. And you know, so he was always just a part of my life as far as my career goes. And uh, you know, uh, and Creep Show was was really I think uh, pivotal for me as far as just going on and, and making a career out of it. He know? gave me Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah. We direct, yeah. will you Night direct yes. this for yeah, me? That's right. Yeah. Tom, what about you when you look back, how you feel? I, I just uh, love being with George and working with him and uh, all of the times we uh, did uh, Creep Show and Two Evil Eyes and then Bruiser, the yeah. one he, when he finally left Pittsburgh and went up to Canada mm -hmm. to do Bruiser up there. So I worked on three films with him. One of the little pieces of trivia of my life, and a lot to do with um, George and Adrienne and I have worked four times together The Fog, Creep Show, Two Evil Eyes, and Escape from New York. And we have never, <laughs> ever been on screen together. No, you haven't, no, no. So We've known each other almost all of our film careers, uh, the extent, the length of them, and and George was a huge part of them. And well, shall we darling end, man, shall we end this by a toast? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to George. Toast to George. Toast to George. Here, here. Bless him.